Should you get paid for doing nothing? Several countries around the world are running a groundbreaking experiment to find out. It's called a universal basic income, which gives everyone the same fixed salary, whether they work or not. Those involved in the pilot schemes are allowed to spend the money on whatever they like. The idea is by taking away the stress of rent and bills, people will become more innovative and entrepreneurial. But is it fair or practical? Critics say it will only make people lazy and dependent. But could it work? Vanessa Keneally takes a look. It began just two years ago, but has quickly spread across the world. An experiment to see if it pays to give people money for doing nothing. Kenya, Uganda, Brazil, Canada and the US, as well as the Netherlands, Finland and Italy, all have some kind of pilot scheme on the go. Finland began its trial on January the 1st. 2,000 unemployed people were randomly selected and every month for the next two years, they're given $590 tax-free. They'll keep getting it, even if they find a job. Some of the questions the experiment hopes to answer are, will people work less? Will poverty be reduced? And will the experiment increase innovation? All themes discussed at the World Economic Forum earlier this year. And what we've found in our pilots, and we've done pilots, I wish people would look at the evidence rather than continue with their views, but we've done pilots covering thousands of people. And most fundamentally, we found that the emancipatory value of a basic income is greater than the money value. Hello, I am Pepper. Can I help you with something? But the basic income experiment is not only about creative freedom or making society more equal. It's also about being practical. A recent study carried out by a Washington-based research centre found that 75% of Americans are concerned about robots taking over their jobs. Perhaps another reason to consider universal wage. The room is on your right, madam. But some experts believe it will divide society. Which is another way of saying, here's a, we're going to pay you off in exchange for accepting a world in which your contribution to the common good isn't really required. And what you do with your time, that's your business. I think that would be corrosive. And while the pilot scheme has been accepted in many countries, other nations aren't so sure. Last year, Switzerland voted against the idea of giving every adult and every child under 18 an income from birth to death. But while it might have been rejected, some say it was a good way to get the conversation started. We expected 15% approval and yet it's uh, over 20%, which means um, the Swiss want the debate to continue, but they not yet uh, want it introduced right away. Um, I think it's also a statement that we, uh, the Swiss want experiments on a local scale, so to better find out and know more about the effects of basic income, to then have another step maybe seven or ten years from now. So are the Swiss correct in thinking that basic income is inevitable? And if so, is it really something to celebrate? Or is it even too ideological to think that everyone in the world can one day have an equal slice of the economic cake? Vanessa Keneally, The Newsmakers. Well, to discuss this, I'm joined now from Glasgow by Matt Kerr. He's a Labour councillor and an anti-poverty specialist. And from Hanover, New Hampshire, we have Oren Cass. He was Mitt Romney's domestic policy advisor during his presidential campaign and is now a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute where he focuses on anti-poverty policy. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Both of you want to end poverty. I guess you both have different ideas on how to do so. Oren Cass, let me ask you up front. Universal basic income, is it a good idea? No, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, I think at the end of the day, when you look at both what people want and, and what's good for them and what's good for society, uh, people want to be able to make a productive contribution and to earn a living. And a, a basic income is a way of giving up and saying, we don't think that's going to happen, so instead we'd like to pretty much pay you to go away. So, Matt, let's just chuck some cash at people and they'll go away. How's that going to boost an economy <laughs> or end poverty? 
Well, I, I agree with, uh, uh, with the, up to a point that I think most people do want to contribute to society and most people do want to work and do their bit. Uh, but pro unfortunately, at the moment, a lot of people are prevented from doing that. They can't get through that first hurdle. The marginal rates of tax as people go from out of work into work could be as high as 96%, or sometimes even over 100% in some cases. It makes sense to give people that basic uh, safety net to know, uh, so they know they'll never fall below that level. And I think that would actually bring out the talents and, uh, and the best in people. People would take risks. They would, they would take risks with starting business. They would take risks with uh, maybe spending more time in education and developing their own talents. And I think the economy could really develop mm -hmm. exponentially as a result of releasing those talents that, are, that right now are, are just not getting the opportunity to be, to be, to be realised. Oren, there's an argument that this will save money that could be spent on a massive bureaucracy as you're trying to provide services instead of just handing out cash. Isn't that a good argument? Well, I don't think so. Unfortunately, the math I, for a basic income most never adds up. And, and the problem is that you're trying to do a few things. One is, right now we only provide benefits to people who are low income and struggling. If you do a basic income, you have to provide benefits to everybody. Uh, and in theory, you're supposed to provide a, a large enough basic income to live on. If you actually wanted to do that, especially in a developed country like, like in Europe or the United States, uh, you, you'd have to spend a multiple of the total that we spend on anti-poverty programs today. In the U.S., it would be trillions of dollars every year. Uh, so whatever the arguments for or against basic income, it's certainly not going to be cheaper than what we do now. Okay, Matt, it's, you're going to run out of cash in the end. That's basically what Oren's saying. <laughs> well, I don't doubt that it, it would cost more money to run for a moment, but uh, there's, a, there's a question here, I think, about uh, the, the, the uh, added value that can be delivered to the economy by doing something like this. As I said earlier, I think releasing and developing people's talents and and actually re de redefining the relationship between the state and the, veg and the, the individual. The state saying to the individual, we believe in you, rather than you have to jump through hoops to be able uh -huh. to have a roof over your head or to be able to feed your family. I think, uh, I think that developing that relationship, developing that, that different type of culture, I think will, uh, will, will do wonders for the, for the economy. Uh -huh. And I, I do actually think it will grow the economy. And if we grow the economy, then there will be more to share out. Um, yes, we have to look uh, carefully at taxation. Um, yes, I mean, somebody from my political perspective, yes, I, I'm more keen on progressive income taxation uh, than maybe some others uh, might be. That's fine. But we should, we should also be looking at how assets are taxed too. In the future, um, the way the economy is developing, um, it will become uh, the, the ability to become... Uh, to develop exponential wealth out of uh, mm -hmm. you know out of a, a particular idea um, grows every day, right? And we have to do something about that. It's not to say to hold back people from having brilliant ideas and developing them. Not at all. What what it, what it is about is stopping an, a, a, a massive inequality gap mm -hmm. that could actually collapse the economy in the end if okay. we don't find a mechanism of redistributing that somehow or other. Mm -hmm. We won't have any, anybody, any, any, anybody to actually buy the products that are being made. Looking at how assets are owned and, and taxed and redistributing that through, that through something like the basic income may be one way of uh, tackling that. That's why I support the pilot and testing right. this, this. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm glad you brought up the pilot attempts because I want to ask you, Oren, this then takes us beyond the hypothetical and, and the sort of conceptual questions. And I can go, OK, let's look at a place like Finland where they're trialling it with... 2,000 people, and it seems to be working. I've read some counter arguments to say, well, it only works in that specific context, right? And it won't work elsewhere. But nevertheless, it seems to be working. And you also have some fairly smart people like Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk and others saying, in the face of increasing automation, this might be a good idea. Might there be a conversation that needs to be had here because it might actually work? Well, I think there are two questions there. One is about uh, these pilots that occur. And I, I think it's important to understand that the pilots that we're running don't test a basic income at all. Uh, if you take Finland as an example, it specifically chose people who are already unemployed and gave them a small cash benefit that's not enough to live on uh, for a fixed limited period of time. Uh, that's not a basic income. That is a slightly revised unemployment insurance program. Uh, and I think that's great. Let's have a discussion about how to structure unemployment insurance. But uh, 
you know, I, I agree actually that what we're talking about is a much more uh, philosophical redefinition of, of the relationship of, of the state to individuals. Whose responsibility is it to provide for somebody and for their family? Is it the person's responsibility or is it the government's? Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to test that with a pilot of 2,000 people. But I think that's the question is what kind of society, society do we want to live in? Uh, and, and I think most people don't want to live in a society where it's the state that is supposed to be providing for everybody. Uh, and you can even just look at, at the way parents raise their own children. You know, parents want to help their children succeed in life. Almost no parents think it would be a good idea to tell their child, no matter what happens, no matter how you behave, no matter what you do, I'm going to provide you with an income every year for the rest of your life. If a parent did that, we'd say that's a horrible way to raise a child. Uh, and yet the basic income proposal is to promise that to every child in, in, in a country. I think that uh, we already know what people think of that, and, and, and that common sense says that's, that's not the kind of society okay, so, that we want. So, Matt, why do you want that much more nannying in a nanny state, I, I guess. I mean, to, to an ordinary <laughs> hardworking person who might say, hey, listen, I work hard, I pay taxes. Why should I work hard and pay taxes for Joe Bloggs, mm -hmm. the bum, to just get 500 bucks a month from the government, which is my tax money because I'm working hard? For that ordinary person who's non-ideological, neither on the left or the right, who just says, I'm working hard, mm -hmm. and that, 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 that useless bum is, is, is getting 500 bucks a month of my money. Well, I mean, we can't have it both ways. It's either a nanny state or it's a, or it's a state that it stands by you no matter what. It can't be both. Those are, those are two diametrically opposed uh, positions as far as I can see, and I've just heard them both used against basic income. It's either one or the other. I mean, I see the, the opposite, actually. I, I see this as an empowering thing. I see this as freeing people from the state. Right now, when people actually are, are on hard times, um, they have to jump through various hoops and behave in certain ways that the government of the day uh, believes are, are correct in order for them to get enough money just to live. And sometimes it isn't even that much, uh, certainly speaking for the situation in Britain right now. Now, I, I, I believe in a changing of that relationship. I, 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 see this, I don't see the state's duty to nanny everyone. I see the state's duty as a, as a basic duty of security um, to people. Uh, and that's not, not traditionally people think about that in a mil uh, mil uh, military sense. I, I, I don't know. I think we have other right. duties of security. But, but I don't Matt, think it's acceptable yeah, certainly, for let, people's let, talents to go, go, go wasted let me come be in because, here. They, because they, they, yeah. they aren't able because of the way the economy is structured point. Something uh, to, that Oren to said, themselves a house and a family. Certainly, Matt, I think so we should have that basic, basic level. Yeah, certainly. Something that Oren said, he said this is just like a reversioning of sort of unemployment insurance or, you know, even maybe social security. Would you accept maybe then, rather than this being a kind of principled um, universal basic income across the board, there's a way to look at the most vulnerable in society and say, okay, for this particular category in society, these people have, you know, they're, they're struggling and they need the money and this should be directed towards them, but this is not something that goes across the board. Then I guess you guys might be more in agreement. What do you think about that, Matt? Well, we already have a syst systems of targeted uh, social security supports in the US and in, and in Britain right now. And, and I'll be honest with you, certainly in Britain right now, um, they don't work. Um, <laughs> they don't work because so, uh, billions of pounds of, of benefits go unclaimed because people aren't aware of how to navigate their way through the system. The system itself costs hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds every year to run. Uh, the, the bureaucracy is, is truly incredible. Uh, I, and, you know, it, it's, it's almost labyrinthine. You know, you know, it's, uh, you know people trying, I, I, people, constituents that come to my surgeries have to somehow find a, find a way through this system. And, and unless you actually have grown up knowing it, it's, uh, it's, it's chaotic. And, and it, it, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't churn out fear. Okay. Uh, results. Okay. It, pr so it provides artificial cliff edges as well when people start earning and they lose Good certain point. benefits, and, and they can end up actually earning earning less in work than they are on benefits. Now, clearly, nobody would support that sort of situation. Okay, so let's ask I mean, Oren. The, the classic okay. thing that a basic income can solve is that cliff edge. Okay, issue. so Oren, trying to categorize it and sort of differentiate between those who need it most and others doesn't work, according to Matt. Final answer from you, Oren. Well, I think he's right that that's a challenge of, of how you structure a safety net. How do you provide a, a basic safety net to people who need it without just having the government come in and, and be paying everybody money? 
you know, what I think would be a better approach that I really support is something called a wage subsidy, uh, which is let's not pay people money for not working, uh, but let's take some of that money and actually put it into people's paychecks. So if you have a low wage worker who's having trouble making ends meet, uh, let's help them by, by making that paycheck worth a little bit more. That's a way to both make the safety net work better, help, help people with very low incomes, uh, but, but not shift to this world where we're just handing money out willy-nilly for free to everybody uh, with, without reference to what they need uh, and, and with this idea that it's just the government's job to, to take care of everybody. Okay, well, you both agree there's a problem. You both have different views as to how to solve the problem. We'll have to wait and see how the pilot projects play out around the world, not, not only in Finland but elsewhere. Universal basic income, we're hearing more and more of this. We'll be following it closely and hopefully have you both on the program again in the not-too-distant future. Matt Kerr and Oren Kass, I thank you very much for joining us on the Newsmakers.